Hello ladies and gentlemen, I am Veos and welcome to another video. For those of you who have been watching my streams, I've been doing an SSRT build. This little build of mine is going to be different. I'm going to be not using the space plane hanger or the VAB. Basically, the craft has a type of ground crew. It uh, The ground crew will fuel it up, it will put the payload on it, it will prop it up, and it will launch it. And of course, I'll be able to build a type of space station doing just this, having the ship go up into space, deploy the payload, come back down, and basically just never use the space plane hangar or the VAP whatsoever. All the fuel will be there, all the payloads will be there, everything. Now, I've already done this once before, a long, long time ago. But I want to go ahead and try to revisit it, because I never really completed it. There was so many bugs with the game back then, way more than there is now. I mean, the, the grass was, like, made out of ice or something. I couldn't keep anything in one spot, it kept on sliding. Although I hear that bug is back. Well, anyway. So, like I said before, if you've been watching the streams, um, I've pretty much completed the actual SSRT. It's got everything ironed out now. It can take about 36 tons into space and come back, be refueled, and go back up there. So right now what I'm working on is a type of launch platform. Something that the craft can park underneath, and then this platform will grab it and prop it upwards. It will then refuel it, put a payload in it, and then the craft can launch and do it the whole cycle all over again. In the past, when I first started doing this, I actually had several vehicles. I had the launch platform, I had a refueler, I had a vehicle that would take cargo and put it inside the spacecraft. I had a type of 18-wheeler that would grab the cargo and pull it up towards the spacecraft. About maybe seven or eight different vehicles necessary to launch this thing into space. So what I'm going to attempt to do this time is streamline it. I'm going to try to take all of these vehicles that I used way in the past and put them into maybe two or three vehicles tops. Something that will lower park count so that it runs smoothly and basically uh, not be so tedious in trying to get this thing ready to be launched. I mean, in reality, that's that's basically what it is. It's, it's very tedious getting something onto the launch pad and finally launching it. Everybody else only sees the couple of minutes of it going up into space. And they're like, wow, that's cool. They don't really understand just how much pain, sweat, time, and tears went into that one moment. So I understand. I understand all this time testing and testing and testing, trying to get this thing to work. I mean, it's, it's definitely a labor of love. Definitely a labor of love. So as you can see right here, I'm trying to go for a type of roller design. Something where I can just put weight on one side or the other and just have it casually rock back and forth type of rocker design. But uh, I'm also having a lot of trouble in having it having all the weight go from one side to the other, it would accelerate downwards and smash into the ground. I tried uh, implementing a type of cargo bay ramp system to slowly, gradually bring it from one side to the other, but it, it, the cargo bay ramp system only works two ways. There's open and close. There's no middleman. So I tried to use robotic parts, and unfortunately, the robotic parts are very, very weak. Even the biggest ones that are in the game, you need like, I don't know, eight of them in order to just get the thing moving. But then, like I said before, because it's a rocker design and there's a lot of weight on one side, you can't really transfer that weight back and forth very quickly. So you're stuck with all that weight on one side. You need to figure out how to slow it down before it tumbles across itself, smashing into the ground. Eventually, I did away with the whole robotic systems because they they were really weak and just weren't strong enough in order to begin the roll forwards as well as stop it before it crashed into the ground. Ultimately, I stuck with the cargo ramp design because the ramps were a hell of a lot stronger, even though you had to make sure that they were uh, really, really tied down 
to the craft itself because like, again this thing was really really heavy and so even with the ramps it would bend them out of shape and cause them to make the whole thing explode. Eventually I just trimmed down the whole system because it was way too heavy and I really couldn't control it um, in any way shape or form. I tried putting a buttload of reaction wheels on it and the whole thing wouldn't budge. So even in its smaller more compact state it was still a lot of weight but thanks to the fact that it was more compact I actually had more control using the cargo bay ramps in order to control this thing's rocking momentum. Now there was a few times where I contemplated using engines in order to control its uh, descent and ascent but I, I was thinking to myself how would engineers actually do it in real life because I'm trying to mimic reality and in reality they wouldn't put freaking rocket engines on a damn platform that was only meant to do one specific thing. A, rocket engines tend to explode, right? Even if they would put jet engines on the thing, you really have, you don't have that much control with a jet engine. It spools up, it takes time to spool up, it takes time to slow down, all that jazz. And you don't know what's going to happen either. Uh, anything that requires fuel tends to explode. So, in reality, they really wouldn't go that direction. They would go for a very mechanical, very trustworthy design. Something that would move slowly but surely and be safe. Above all, safety. So, right now, I was experimenting with very large landing gears. I figured maybe the spring system would, would save me when it came back down. But... It was just so much weight coming down on one side that it would actually, it would, it, it would, the momentum would bounce up and around the actual landing gear and slam down any damn way, destroying the landing gear because obviously that was a lot of weight for that one little landing gear, even though it was the largest one in the game. So if I couldn't control, if I couldn't control it using the ramps, if I couldn't control it using the robotic parts, if I couldn't control it using landing gears, then I really had to focus the design on the actual weight itself. I had to make it so I had so I could fine tune it to where the weight was just enough to where it would rock very slowly to one side, and then I could catch it and then bring it down gently. So for the next test, I went ahead and put the actual SSRT on the launch platform. I'm trying to figure out just how much weight I actually need in order to prop this thing upright. Surprisingly, I found out that you don't really need all that much weight. I mean, yes, even even empty weight, the SSRT was something like uh, almost 100 tons. So it, it still was a lot of weight to prop up, but not as much as you would think because of the rocker system design. As long as there was a lot of leverage on one side, it would be able to roll backwards and prop the whole thing upwards. So finally now it was starting to come together. I knew what I wanted. Um, the compact design was working. Uh, I'd, right now I just had to fine tune it. I wanted it so that it would work 100% of the time. That nothing would fail ever. Because in, in this scenario we're not using the space plane hangar, we're not using VAB. So everything has to work every single time. I can't have something explode and suddenly, you know, we're stuck on the ground. Uh, there, there's no... There would be no just getting another craft and putting it out there. Um, it's kind of like a challenge, you know? For example, how well are your crafts built? How sturdy they are? How crack and free they are? Things of this nature. So, in my mind, if I can test it over and over and over and over again and abuse the hell out of it and it still works, then that's a win for me. So, my idea of a craft that's sturdy and crack and free is something that's very simplistic in its design uh, very few minimal 
moving parts, uh, not a whole lot of slamming on the ground, and basically just keep it simple. So I can kind of hear it in the comments now, Veos, why not just build an SSTO? Something that launches from the runway, something that you can just load up from uh, the cargo ramp system in the back or the front and, you know, keep it real simple in design. Uh, the problem with that is that, like I said before, I'm trying to sort of mimic reality. Yes, we don't have an SSRT just yet. Uh, even Elon Musk with SpaceX, their Starship program relies on two separate crafts. But nothing says that in the future something of this kind of design couldn't happen. I mean, they were really working on it way back in the day with Venture Star, and scientists and engineers were convinced that it was possible. The whole rapier engine thing, or in this case, in reality, the Saber engine, it's very experimental, still in R&D, and it, they haven't really built anything that's working as of yet. And by working, of course, I mean actually on a craft being flown. Unlike the Raptor engine that, of course, SpaceX is developing, it's still in its infancy and still experimental, but at least it's on a craft. At least it's being used. It's, it's, you know, it's past, you know, that specific point in research and development, even though it's still in research and development, technically speaking. It's kind of past that point where it's, it's in application mode to where it's, Fine, it's just in fine-tuning mode, basically. Unlike the Sabre engine, which hasn't even left the ground. So it's my opinion that SSRTs will probably be a thing before we ever see the Sabre engine doing anything at all. Now, don't get me wrong, I'm not hating on the Sabre engine. I'm just saying that it's in such, it's such an infancy state right now we won't probably see it for another many, many decades down the road. So yeah, that's why I'm sticking more to an SSRT build for this challenge that I've made for myself. So anyway, ladies and gentlemen, thank you so much for watching and thank you so much for being a part of this channel and thank you for your support. Uh, please remember to uh, like this video so that way I can fight the YouTube algorithm. But um, Hopefully I can see you on my streams, since I do stream this a lot. And uh, I'm going to try to make more videos like this in the future. Again, thank you for everything that you guys do for me. And I will see you in the next video. Bye for now.